Good evening, Bismarck United Church of Christ, and welcome to our midweek pause. Take a deep breath, let it out, and let yourself be fully present in this place. As we've been doing the last couple of weeks, we've been walking through the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith just to dive deeper into our own beliefs and our faith. And so I'll remind you of what we've read so far. Our Statement of Faith is in the back of our hymnal. So when we are back together again, or if you are joining us in person on Sundays, you can find the Statement of Faith in the back of our hymnal. We believe in you, O God, eternal Spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. And the statement that we look at tonight is this next one. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. But before we jump all the way in, let's go to 1 John and read a little bit about what it is that the early church said about this aimlessness and sin. So this is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us in us. And from John, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. God's love was re revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent God's son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's perfect love is perfected in us. Here ends our readings. So we have these quotes from the letter first, from 1 first John, and we also have this statement of faith in the United Church of Christ the statement about God, you seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. And as 1 John points out to us that there are times when we are wrong. There are times when we sin. There are times when we are in the midst of aimlessness, meaning we miss the mark entirely. I mean, who among us could ever say we have never in our lives been wrong. And in fact, it's a part of our faith to admit when we're wrong. It's a part of our faith tradition to be aware that we are not all-knowing, only God is all-knowing, and we do not carry all the right answers in that we can misunderstand things and misstate things, and we can do things that hurt other people. But it's also part of our faith, that piece of forgiveness, that piece of relationship building that is at the core of who we are, that we talked a little bit about even last week. And at that core involves admitting that we are wrong sometimes. Because admitting that we are wrong allows spaces 
for there to be relationship to build again. Because it allows spaces for change to occur. It allows places of growth and rejuvenation, places where we can mend broken relationship, where we can tear down walls, where we have built them up, where we can put gates where there are fences. And this part of the statement calls us to that. It names that we as humans, we do sin. We are wrong. We do things that cause hurt. It names that just as a truth of humanity. And it names in that, that being a Christian is a journey. That just like none of us are free from aimlessness or sin, that none, no one else around us is either. And being a person of faith, being in a community of faith, means to journey in that path together as God continuously seeks in holy love to bring us together. That holy love that is so powerful. And we heard about it in that second reading from 1 John. That God is love. And how is it that we know that God is with us? It is when we see love being played out. That we get to embody love and show it to others. It's a way of sharing God's love with others. And it is that holy love which seeks to save us from aimlessness and sin, and it also seeks to save others from that as well, to continuously always be building and rebuilding relationships with each other. That in every relationship, every healthy relationship, there must be an element of humility. There must be places where we say, I was wrong and I am sorry and let us find a new way of living together. And in every relationship there's places for others to say that too. To be that holy listener that hears others when they say to us, I'm sorry, or when they say to us, I want to build something new with genuine honesty in that. Now there's also some things that this statement does not say. And sometimes what it does not say is just as important as what it does say. So the statement, you seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You'll notice that it does not say anything about what that looks like exactly. In the United Church of Christ, we carry such a diversity of theologies, such a diversity of opinions, and we understand that sharing that with each other helps us to deepen our faith, helps us to maintain humility, and helps us to grow into God's holy love. And in this, it doesn't neither affirm nor de deny an existence of universal salvation, because we know that how people understand salvation is different across the board. For some people, they'd say, God seeks to save all, therefore God cannot fail. So all are saved by God's holy love. And we would have universal salvation. Others would say that we have free will as human beings, and so some may resist God's love forever. Others follow more in the vein of like Karl Barth, one of the, the theologians, Karl Barth, and say that God, in each of us, there are parts that God will save and there are parts that will perish. And if you think of yourself, you may think of, there's parts I really like and there's parts I'd love to get rid of. And that is what that perspective says. But in it, even though 
it leaves an openness to it within this statement. Even though it leaves a place where we can admit, you know, maybe I don't know everything. Maybe I have more to learn and more to grow into. That still, it affirms God's love. And that the, we can place no limits on God. And that is in this week's piece of the UCC Statement of Faith. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. Friends, as you go into the rest of this week, as you rest this evening, may you go in peace and may you go with God's blessing and may you be a blessing to others. Every day.